Okay, so here's just a general agenda of what we're going to cover today. So what is bonding? So here's a more formal definition, but essentially um, Connecticut borrows money to fund certain projects and we have to pay those, we have to pay those back, but it's just a way for us to fund more projects and be able to um, support the economic development of um, projects in Connecticut. So bonding is a two-step process. There's authorization and there's allocation. So authorization is through passage of the bond bill in the finance package and allocation is through the state bond commission. So when I first started covering bonding, I thought it was a really complicated process, but when I, once I understood, it's actually one of the easiest processes to understand. So the bond bill process, the authorization portion of it, it's a regular bill process. So there is a starting point and an end point and it ends with the passage of the bond bill. Uh, similar to the budget, there's several line items and many different categories. And then the bond bill process typically includes what are what you'll be you'll hear them referred to as bill bonds, and that stands for general obligation bonds. And those go through the subcommittee of the bonding subcommittee through the finance revenue and bonding committee. Um, and those are things for capital purposes. So like housing, economic development, community care facilities, state parks, open space, state facilities. Some examples of a bond, of a bond bill examples are $50 million for baby bonds, $100 million uh, in extension for crumbling foundation program, uh, $25 million to address health disparities in mental health and substance abuse, funding for Yukon research and health center. Those are the types of projects that are covered with bonding dollars. Also that school construction. So that is school construction is its own separate entity. That's part of the bond prop, part of the bond bill, but also is in collaboration with appropriations and finance appropriations and the education committee. And then tr the special transportation fund as well. So the bond bill process starts off in the fall where agencies are submitting capital requests to OPM. Then at the start of session uh, in February, in the long session, the governor proposes the bond bill or revisions to the same to those capital requests as part of the budget. And then in March, that's when the subcommittee starts meeting. And the subcommittee is made up of members of the finance committee, but the chair of the finance committee is not the chair of the bonding subcommittee, which we'll go over that in the next slide. And then the subcommittee begins to have agency hearings where they are hearing from all the agencies who have submitted these requests for the bond package. And then in April, the subcommittee develops a legislative bond bill, and then they submit that to the committee, and the committee has a public hearing, the, the larger finance committee. And then the finance committee votes on the bond bill in a committee meeting. And then in May and June, that's when the bond bill goes to the House and Senate floors, and it passed, and then there's continual, as you know, continual negotiations to the end. Okay, so the bonding subcommittee, as I said before, the subcommittee, the bonding subcommittee is made up of members of the finance committee, but not all members of the finance committee are on the bonding subcommittee. For this, for last session and this session, the chairs, the two chairs of the bonding subcommittee are Senator Moore and Representative Napoli. And then the ranking members are Senator Wong and Representative Piscopo. And then we have a list of the other members of the subcommittee. If you want a full list, you can reach out to me and I can give you this list after the meeting. I'm not going to go through everybody, but as Zoe said, I'm the committee clerk of the finance committee, but we also have an administrator, Bree Wolf, who also staffs the bonding subcommittee. So the agency hearings begin around March and they're scheduled with the subcommittee uh, chairs. So we will have those agency hearings where they're open to the public, but it's just the agencies presenting their presenting their proposal to the bonding subcommittee and advocating for the money that they want for their program. And the subcommittee chairs decide which agencies are going to be invited invited to the hearing, and then those hearings um, help those help the chairs and the committee craft the bond bill and advocate for the dollars where they want to put the allotment in the, or the, the authorization in the bond bill. And then the, yeah, at, at the, it's similar to the committee public hearing process. 
Okay, so I put this in the middle of the presentation because this can happen both before the bond bill negotiations happen, before agencies give their presentations. And bonding project requests can happen anytime throughout the year. Representative Napoli and I like to say it's we accept them on a rolling basis. But I'm sure you know by now that every member in our caucus can propose and request a bond project. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go through like some frequently asked questions and just talk about those requests. So the types of project requests that we generally receive um, finance the construction of buildings, grants, loans for housing, economic development, community care facilities, state parks and open space. Um, so I think yesterday in committee process, they mentioned office hours. So uh, the bonding subcommittee is unique and we also do office hours to kind of talk about the types of projects um, that are typically approved. So the project request forms, as you all know, a request form must be submitted for a request to be considered. Um, supplemental information is always required. It helps us understand the type of project being requested. It also helps us when we go to the governor and OPM to ask and advocate for your projects. The submitted request form aren't public and it's just because sometimes there are politics behind like certain project requests so there are times when legislators were at, will ask to see an example and unfortunately like I won't share those but they can certainly ask their colleagues so I just wanted to mention this but generally people uh, submit bill proposals that contain bonding and most of the time, that is just to show that their constituents, that they are asking for money, they're advocating for the community. But we don't do anything with those proposals in the Finance, Revenue, and Bonding Committee. What we do is we reach out to those legislators and we ask them to submit bonding project request forms. Um, how much money can a legislator request? Any amount can be requested. However, Representative Napoli likes to remind people the smaller the request, the better. Um, and that comes with a caveat. There are a lot of decisions to be made when we receive a request. We look at if there's another source of funding, what type of jobs that project will create, how long will the project take, are the project shovel ready? So that can be a factor when you are figuring out a number to request. And normally, sorry. Normally, organizations will request a certain number and then a legislator will meet with them and talk about like the need that like the needs they have for that project. Um, and then at that point, either Representative Napoli, I, uh, myself, or the legislator who they're working with will talk to them about either lowering the costs or the reality that they may not get all of the money they're requesting. With whom to speak to about my project? You should speak to Representative Napoli first. Um, if you have questions about the process, you can certainly ask me. Uh, Representative Napoli and I met with a lot of legislators, a lot of organizations, um, a lot of staff to discuss the projects, to discuss like the realities and feasibility of projects. So you can always reach out to the two of us. And then also Sam Zaker is Representative Napoli's aide, and he coordinates a lot of um, a lot of our meetings. So if you have any questions, like he can direct you to Representative Lab Napoli or me. Um, can a lobbyist or organization submit the request for the legislator? No. So every request has to come from a legislator or their CEC on the on behalf of their legislator. It's really hard when we are getting all these bonding requests to know what's a priority of a legislator. And so normally when we receive bonding requests from lobbyists or organizations directly, we'll reach out to the legislator. And at some point in time, a legislator will have no idea that a, that a request has been submitted. Um, Representative, if we make a, a request in one session, does it automatically carry over to the next one? That's a really good question. No, your project will have to be resubmitted. And that's only because sometimes your project is a priority in one session and then the next session, maybe the organization doesn't need any money. Uh, maybe they found a different source of funding. So we will ask that every project that is a priority to a legislator is, is resubmitted. I submitted my request. Is my project automatically approved? No. So each office, our office, OPM, the governor's office, all the four caucuses, they each have their own process for, for requests. So what happens is Representative Napoli and I um, compile all the requests. We have a file that we maintain and we have our own process. And then once we present the projects to OPM and the governor's office, they also have their own pr process that we're not necessarily involved in. We're involved in the very beginning of that process, but then they they decide together which projects will be on an agenda. Sorry. Agencies, I mean, in the prior slide, 
I mean, the agencies are called to uh, hearings or hearings or hearings or meetings with the committee, the committee. And agencies also submit projects. They do submit projects, but they're, they're different than individual legislator projects. But they do ask for money um, for improvements or things that they need to fund um, within their agency. And this is why they are called to meetings. Yes, because basically what happens is we look at the amount of bonding that they were authorized for. And then we see how much they have allocated. And if they have a, a large sum of money that hasn't been allocated, but they're asking for more money, we would like to know why. Yeah. And for example, if there is a request, let's suppose, uh, by a representative of a, a, for a park, and, the, and there are also agencies that are asking for parks, improvements. How, how that, how, what, what is the relationship between both requests that, I mean, to be sure that it's not a duplication, there is not, I mean, that maybe the request of the representative can be put for parks and recreation, for the parks agency. So normally OPM decides which agency a project is funded from. There's obviously requests, but for example, like Yukon Health Center, they'll they'll request money and then the agency decides whether they receive those dollars and from which agency they'll receive the money. And so just, just to follow up on an earlier question about the eligibility of a bond request, the bond requests that were filed this this year going into before the, in the spring, as you showed the calendar, those are still available for consideration by the bond commission through this year. You said they expire at the beginning of the next session. You're talking about when the next session begins, 2024. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. So anything we have that we have submitted that hadn't been approved is still on the, is still eligible for this year. Yes. So any project that you've submitted uh, beginning in January will be considered through December. So if you submit a bond request in November, I would still consider that a 2023 bond request for so the state bond commission. So now. Now that we've gone through the authorization process, now all of those authorized dollars can be considered on the state bond commission um, through allocation. So the state bond commission allocates all of the bond funds that we discussed in the bond bill um, to authorized projects. So that could mean agency projects, that can mean legislator projects, um, just generally they can they can now be allocated. So what is the state bond commission? The state bond commission approves project funding requests on an agenda submitted by the governor. When are state bond commission meetings? Meetings are at the discretion of the governor and OPM. The state bond commission is scheduled to meet on the last Friday of every month, but they're not required to meet every single month. So a lot of the times you'll see meetings on the calendar on the on the web on the CGA website, but they're they're canceled. They can also hold special meetings. So there was a special meeting held this year, I think in April. Um, that was not on the initial calendar, but like I said, it's up to the discretion of the governor and OPM. The agenda, it is posted one week before scheduled meetings. You can find it on their website or generally um, I will send it around to staff and members. Um, location, the state bond commission, they meet always in hearing room 1E at 10.30 a.m. on the scheduled date. And it's streamed on CTN. They're always public. Anyone can attend. No one can speak. There's no, there's no public portion of the meeting, um, but you can certainly talk to commission members before or after the meeting. And you'll see there's a myriad of commission members ranging from commissioners to the governor to the OPM secretary, the treasurer. And then we have four legislative members, the two chairs of the finance, revenue and bonding committee, and then the two ranking members. So a lot of people think it's weird that Representative Napoli doesn't hold a seat on the state bond commission, but he is always available at those meetings, just like Senator Moore, who's the, the committee chair, the, the subcommittee chair, and they are available to ask questions um, as are agencies who are being considered on the bonding agenda or the state bond commission agenda. Um, a lot of times uh, the commission will gavel in and then they'll call up an agency and normally the commissioner or their designee will answer questions um, regarding a project that the last meeting 
they had a lot of questions about the Port Authority. So a representative from the Port Authority sat there for a half hour and answered questions. I had a question from someone who was asking if bond dollars that weren't allocated from previous years can be dispensed by the Bond Commission in later years. Yes. So, so what happens when we look at the bond bill is we see basically what happens in negotiations is we look at a, a spreadsheet, whereas when you view the bond bill, it looks like a general, a general bill that has text. So we can see all of the unallocated dollars and that just, they just sit there, which is why during the agency hearings, we ask them questions like, why haven't you, why haven't you allocated this? these dollars, why do you need more? So they sit there, they don't get taken away. We don't have to authorize new bonding to those agencies, um, but it generally stays there. Okay. So I took a couple screenshots. I'm going to share my screen um, and show you the website, but on the left is OPM, their website, and where you can find the State Bond Commission. You can click on view current and past meeting agendas, and then it'll lead you to the image right below, which are all of the dates of the meetings. You'll see the status of the meeting. Some of them are canceled. April 6th this was the special meeting. You can review the agenda by clicking on the date, and then you can review the minutes. So if there was controversy over one of our legislators projects and someone had a lot of questions, you can go and review that in the minutes or you can watch it on CTN. And then on the right side of the screen is an example of an agenda. Agendas are usually like 50 pages long. So it's it there you have to really like look for things. But the top image is the always the first page of the agenda. And then below is the reason for request. So th those will be all of the projects where you'll find all of your legislators projects or agency projects. There are more, more information on the State Bond Commission. So who administers and staffs the State Bond Commission? It's OPM. The secretary is the secretary of the State Bond Commission and he's responsible for maintaining records and minutes. And then just like I'm the bonding staff person for House Dems, there's also someone from OPM assigned to staff, to staff the meetings, to maintain all of the project requests, and to really understand all of the projects on the agenda. Um, will my project be on an agenda? Like I mentioned, um, when you submit a request, it doesn't guarantee that it'll be on an agenda. There's a process in every office. Um, HCO legislators submit requests to the chair and to the bonding staff person. The chair is responsible for advocating for caucus projects, so always be sure to communicate with Representative Napoli and also communicate with me. Representative Napoli at times will recommend that you speak to the governor because he is ultimately the person who decides whether your project goes on an agenda. Where is my project? If a legislator's project is selected by the governor, the project will appear on an SBC agenda. The commission agenda contains the name, municipality, brief description, and allocation dollar amount of the project. The project will appear under the administering agency section and the, the agenda won't contain the legislator's name. So if you're looking for a project and you're searching Representative McCarthy Bay, he won't find it. But you will find Fairfield or part of Bridgeport because that's part of her district now. How to search the agenda. Since it's a really, really long agenda, the easiest thing to do is control F. Sometimes if you can't easily find it, you might have to use other words that are associated with the project. Or you can just ask me. Normally what I do when I receive the agenda is I go through the entire agenda to see what projects are on the agenda and to see what which of our legislators' projects are on the agenda. My project made it onto an agenda. It passed the commission, what now? So the first thing legislators like to do is let their constituents know, but you shouldn't let them know until passage and conclusion of the meeting because something could happen just like in a committee, committee meeting, you think a bill is gonna pass and it ends up blowing up and it doesn't, it doesn't pass. So do not advise your legislators to let their constituents know to send an e-blast, a press release, or do a Facebook Live until after the meeting concludes. After any state bond commission meeting, I will send an email saying that all items passed or if anything else happened in the meeting, I will make sure that's reflected in my email. And then now what? So where, when do when does the project get the money? When will the process begin? So much like everything in state government, it takes time. And just like the budget, a lot of you are asking um, Brittany, Emily, and I, like where where is certain money for certain projects? There, like I said, is a process. So it has to go through a contract process. It has to be 
there, there are all these checks and balances that happen. So it takes a little while, but if you don't hear from them within a couple of months, then reach out to me and I'll talk to my counterpart at OPM. And, and just like the budget, sometimes there are errors. So we have to make language changes at following meetings. Um, there could be miscommunications with organizations or agencies. Like maybe they thought they were getting money, this certain amount of money for something else, but it specifically states in the agenda that it's for a specific purpose. Are SIF and the bonding process the same? So I'm sure you all know by now the that SIF stands for Community Investment Fund. It's not the same, but all the items that are passed through the Community Investment Fund, um, they have to be approved on a commission, a state bond commission agenda. So the process is not the same as legislator bond requests, but in order for all of the money to be dispersed through the Community Investment Fund, it has to go through the state bond commission. One of the questions I had is, I know you said that sometimes the chair, Ron Napoli, might suggest that you reach out to the governor. Mm -hmm. What is the thought behind doing like a, a support letter to the governor, like if a recommended letter that they send to the governor? And like what the format should be as far as who we CC on a letter like that, if they recommend it? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So- and I'm sorry, I just realized on Zoom, I don't think anyone could hear. So Jason asked basically what the process is to reach out to the governor's office if Representative Napoli recommends that a legislator do so. So you can write a formal letter, just like any letter of support. It should have letterhead. It should be addressed to the governor. You can copy a staff on it. Um, I like to recommend you copy the staff person who I can share with I can share with you all but it's also on on their website if the le if a legislator has a really good relationship with the governor or any of his senior staff it'd probably be really smart to give them a call just to talk to them it's easier to advocate for a project when you can get on the phone or talk to them in person you can always send a letter and then do follow up by a phone call or talking to them in person but I have I have noticed that there is better success when you go and talk to the governor directly. For community investment fund, should we also wait to message when it passes the state bond commission or is that a different setup? Can you double message on that? I think you can double message on it. I don't know, Corey, Corey um, handles the community investment fund. So Jason's asking like, should you message after items pass? through SIF. And then he asked if we should double message. I would say double mes message. There's there's no harm in letting your constituents know that this is a project that you advocated for. And it's, you know, you can even frame it as it's past the first step to funding. Because my understanding is that it's, they have a certain amount of days from the passage at CIF to yes, put it before the bond commission, Exactly. Right? And that's why they called a special meeting in April because they were not going to meet in April, but they had to pass all of the SIF items on the agenda. So I... I don't see any harm in letting your constituents know multiple times that you secured funding. I just want to go back to this because SIF has a different board and a different process. So my question is, is there anyone on staff that would be willing to supply us with who that board is, who's on the board, and what that process is? for? Yes. So um, under important contacts, I listed Corey Ryu. He handles SIF. I believe the members are listed online. Okay. I'm just going to briefly show um, the house bond request form. Okay. So this is the bond request form. Representative Napoli and I are considering putting this online um, as a Google form submission. So your, your project would still be secure and it would be, it would still be confidential, but we've noticed it may be easier for a lot of people. It'll still be offered this way, um, but just a way to streamline the process. It'll still generally contain the same questions. So there are times where the forms are submitted and not everything is filled out and it ends up being more work for, for the legislator staff and for us if we have to go back and ask these questions. And the reason that we ask you to fill out every single question is because we take the bond request form and we take all of the supporting documents and we share it with OPM and we go through all of the projects. Um, it's a very time consuming task, but it helps them decide and it helps us advocate for all of our legislators projects. If 
If a legislator feels that an organization can fill out the form better, more thoroughly, then that's totally fine. You can absolutely send it to an organization, have them return it. And then the legislator, like I had mentioned, the legislator or their staff needs to submit it. The, and you can certainly copy someone from the organization onto the email, but it has to come from a legislator or their staff. I would also just add for all the legislators on the call here, if you need to find this form, Zoe sent it out at the beginning of session. So go to your aid first to ask for the form before reaching out to Zoe or me for the form, because they should be able to find it for you if you need it. And the reason that I haven't shared it in the end drive is because a lot of lobbyists have received the form. And I'm not saying that it not being in the end drive will prevent lobbyists from obtaining a form, but it's just something that we've discussed as just like another level of not protection, but just to ensure that only lobby or only legislators and their staff receive this. And then lastly, I just wanted to show you all an agenda for the state bond commission. So here's the OPM website. Um, I have it saved on in my favorites, but you could also just Google state bond commission. You can go to the governor's ct.gov and you can find OPM. But here are current and past meeting agendas. So as you will see, there is a meeting scheduled for the end of September. They've canceled the last two meetings. Um, and generally, we won't know if there's a meeting until like towards the end of the month. And I think a couple of people have asked whether or not Representative Napoli and I see the agenda before it gets sent out to the public uh, or submitted online, and we don't see it. We can't see it. And so I received the agenda just like all of the legislators a week before the meeting happens. So you can click on the date and you can go through the agenda. This one's 48 pages. So normally what I'll do, and not everyone has to do this, but I look through the entire agenda and then I control F and I find, I'm going to use Representative McCarthy Behe as an example. I'll type in Fairfield and her project popped up. And so it says these funds are requested to provide a grant and aid to the town of Fairfield for Rooster River flood mitigation project. Um, at the bottom, it says total request. It's There's the number of her request. And then it will give a little description of the project and what those funds are, are used for. If it doesn't say that the funds are used for something that you intended for the project, then you'd have to change the language. You can't just, it has, the, the funds have to be used for what's on the agenda. So it, it is common for us to have to change language and request new language. It does take longer, obviously, because meetings aren't held every single month, um, but we can do it and it's pretty common. 